Hey guys, Robbie here from CrossFit South Bend. Today we're going to talk about kale. So the title of this video is Kale Tastes Like Feet, or does it? So uh, many of you guys know the comic Jim Gaffigan who famously said that kale tastes like feet, and I'll admit that kale raw or steamed or boiled pretty much does taste pretty gross. However, there is a way you can make it that makes it taste pretty good. Now I know people like to knock on kale these days because it's kind of the it vegetable. Um, you know, there are kale smoothies and all these different kale things, but if you've been wary of trying kale, um, this is a quick, easy preparation that you can do. So, basically what I have here is I've got a bunch of kale that I just really rough chopped up, just, you know, lengthwise one way and then that way. Uh, I say this little top part to see how, you could, how I could uh, cut it, so cut it like that, and then give it a little other cut. Uh, I've cut up a little bit of garlic right here that I'm just going to split up a bit. Um, by the way, I make absolutely no claims to culinary perfection here one way or another about how I'm cutting things up or rough chopping this. This is just a quick, easy weeknight side dish. So what we're going to do now that we have those ready is I'm going to turn on the saute pan here. Turn on the stove top, I should say. And then I've got some ghee here, which... Most of you guys watching this probably know what ghee is. If you don't, it's basically just clarified butter. That's really going to make the uh, that's really going to make the kale taste much better than your standard olive oil. So I use olive oil to cook a lot of different things, but I wouldn't use olive oil or avocado oil to cook my kale. It's just not going to have the same taste. Other oils you could use um, pork fat otherwise known as lard. As long as you're getting it from a good source, that's actually really delicious. Like um, any sort of bacon where you render out the fat, that's gonna be really good uh, as well in terms of taste. But I'd say, yeah, probably ghee or some type of pork fat. Uh, you could use beef fat, could use duck fat, could use olive oil, but ghee is really gonna be your best, best bet. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna lift up the uh, garlic and put it right in the pan and Make sure there's some oil in there. You notice I put a decent chunk of uh, ghee in there. You don't have to put a chunk that big in. I just, you know, usually do a rough scoop and um, it all comes out in the wash basically in terms of uh, sauteing the kale. Now, something to say about the garlic. The garlic, depending on how you like it, you may want to put it in later. I tend to like my garlic a bit more on the burnt, done side, and it's going to get done uh, pretty well while we have it in there. If you like it a little bit less done, put it in towards the end. So I'm just waiting a little bit here for, you know, to where it's fragrant and where I can start to smell it, and I can now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some of the kale and toss it in there. Now, if you've never done this before with any leafy greens, A, be careful, and it's going to make a popping sound, okay? It's going to make repeated popping sounds just because of the water and the oil. Literally, all I do from here is I'm just, you know, you can take a wooden spoon, you can take some sort of spatula, whatever you got that can just stir this stuff up. I'm just stirring it around so that the oil coats it. Now, what I'll do to give it uh, a bit more flavor, I mean, I suggest you season your food no matter what, uh, whether you like salt or not, it's just bring out the flavors, but I'll give it a couple passes of salt. While I'm doing this, I just gave it one pass of salt right there, and I'll probably give it another one or two before I finish. So as I'm sauteing this stuff up, guys, I just wanted to talk about a couple of things. So I say this to people a lot when we do grocery store tours and things like that. Find varieties of things that you like. I've tried raw kale before and it just, yeah, I would agree with Jim Gaffigan, it just tastes pretty gross. Uh, steamed and boiled, eh, not so much. And of course your taste preferences are gonna differ, but find something you like. You know, this kale dish is one of my favorite side dishes and it's because I like, um, you know, the garlic to be a bit more done. I like the uh, kale to be a bit more done than it would be with the steamed or the boiled stuff. And just even more generally, 
kale is from the same family as cabbage and broccoli and cauliflower. And a lot of people, you know, they've got negative associations with cauliflower or broccoli or Brussels sprouts or cabbage. But that's a perfect example of the same principle we were just talking about, which is if you roast those things at high heat, they're really delicious. But if you steam or boil them, eh, not so much. So give a few things a try. See, see what works out for you and what you really enjoy. Now you can see that the kale is turning a brighter green color here. Honestly, at this point, if you wanted to, you could just take it out and basically be done with it. I like the kale to be uh, a little bit more on the done side. I just put a second thing of salt in there. You don't have to if you don't like it. The garlic is getting a little bit on the more done side. Again, if that's what you like, you can just uh, have it there. But it's really, it's really up to you there what you, uh, what you like in terms of what you want to do. So one of the, th one of the things I like about this as opposed to um, like spinach, and a lot of people like spinach, and if you like spinach, go for it. But if you've ever cooked spinach before, you put a whole heap of the stuff in there and it turns into this little like wet mound of spinach that, you know, A doesn't really end up being that much and B is it's really wet and soggy. The kale retains its crunchiness. It's really nice and crisp, and um, that's one of my favorite things about it. It's more, obviously it's not a chip, of course, but it has more of that crunchiness to it. So that's about where I would call it in terms of the doneness. You'll see that the garlic here is a little bit, uh, like if I could flip that over, well, I'm not sure I can, but you can see it's kind of getting darker and blacker. Sometimes I'll leave it on just for a little bit longer to the point where you can see this little kale bit right there that's black. Um, that's just my own personal taste preference, but I think it really adds to that um, crisp, um, well done uh, taste. So that's basically what I would do to make the dish. Now, what would this go well with? Um, it goes really well with uh, butternut squash. So butternut squash and kale you'll see a lot in recipes. Uh, that's a really good pairing. Um, Pork dishes, like I said, whether you cook it in pork fat or not, it's definitely going to taste pretty good with some sort of pork dish. You could shave some, uh, you know, some lemon zest on top if you like, or you could even put some uh, bacon bits in if you like. So we just want to show you a different preparation of kale that might make it into your uh, weeknight repertoire and might make it so that, you know, something that you were initially hesitant to try, you could give it a try to and see if you like. All right, guys, thanks so much for tuning in. We'll see you next time.